Welcome to On The Chain. So big development, you know, if everyone knows um, XRP, XRP Labs, uh, XRPL Labs, Wheats of Wins company over there in the Netherlands, Yep. But they did something no big, well. Jeff. They did something big. And what is that big? Well, they no. released, you know, and this is a great tweet here. For two years, they collaborated with other entities. They have a track record for building on and supporting the XRPL system. But today, or actually yesterday, uh, or was that Monday? It might have been Monday. Who knows, Jeff? We Can't last show was Sunday. Up, can't they come up with Whatever. a name that people can pronounce? Zahao is how it's pronounced. Zahao. So they published the white paper for Zahao. It's an XRP ledger protocol chain. Proud to publish this uh, this chain alongside a GitHub, Ally Networks, and Evernode, XRPL, and others. We believe it's the best, fastest, safest way to get hooks. Lightweight smart contracts for the XRP protocol out there. So now we can shortly start building all the things we've envisioned for every life utility powered by the XRP Ledger protocol. Interesting. This is massive news because it's such a phenomenal development and everybody's like, XRP, XRP, when's it going to go up? Well, you have to start building things and you have to start doing something, right? This is mm. part of this. This is what we to wins this company's done. It says we'll continue to build the entire XRP Ledger ecosystem and everything we build will be open for the entire ecosystem to benefit from. We believe the multi-chain XRP ledger protocol yeah. ecosystem can bring both proven yes. resilience of the XRPL mainnet and endless new possibilities of hooks. Hooks is a weird name. Smart hooks is a hooks. Yeah, but you can pronounce hooks. You can't pronounce the name of their protocol. But smart, well, smart contracts is hooks is smart contracts. So, but what is this network they? Yeah, so once Zaha is uh, fully live, the ZUM wallet will obviously be updated to support the multi-XRPL protocol networks like XRPL mainnet and Zaha. One step closer to realizing their vision, it's a it's a it's a phenomenal update. Let's see Dude, here. Let me do this. It's huge. You know, you know what the one thing these guys are doing, they've been they've been pushing the limit of the XRPL right from the beginning, you know, of their project. You know, we had the uh the tip bot. Uh, the XRP tip bot and, you know, now, you know, they move on. Look at the, the Zum wallet. Really, it's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool solution. Super easy to use. Um, I like the direction they're moving in to simplify the utility of hooks. Simpli you know, allow for the simplification of uh, smart contracts to come into being. And look at, their, look at where they're at with not a lot of hype. No, no airdrops. No tokens, no noise, no pollution. They just are building on their project, which is yeah. outstanding. And what's great about Zaha is the like fact it. that it's it's a side chain. So one of the things that that I've always okay. really admired is the fact that anytime you have software, you have legacy software, and you try to update the software, you go, listen, the XRPL works. There's nothing to mess with. So uh, David Schwartz's vision has always been never to start building this and adding this. Side chain is the way to go. And uh, it says this the, the best thing is disclaimer is this crypto asset white paper not been approved by any competent authority in any member state of the European Union. Hmm. So you do that because you don't want to get in trouble. And we'll talk about the SEC going after somebody else that, that just uh, dropped a lot of fear into. A lot of communities, the offer of the crypto assets, solely responsible for the content. That's the disclaimer, just in case your authority is looking at this. But it's a smart contract side chain for the XRP ecosystem. It's a fork of the XRP Ledger's uh, open source rippled code base. And it embodies all the useful and innovative features right. of the XRPL, including environmental right. sustainability tweaks and upgrades. So some here are some of the core features. So retains the key features that made the XRP one of the most enduring and popular networks including the XRP Ledger Consensus Protocol. It was previously called Ripple Protocol Consensus Algorithm. It's decentralized yeah. exchange, yeah. logic of protecting the ledger against spam and bloat and charging burning fees. Uh, the NATO token substitutes recent XLS20 NFTs for the cleaner, simpler URI tokens. How about that? Mm, that's interesting. Cleaner and simpler. I, I like that. Hooks for smart contracts built into this new feature is a house hooks, the smart contract implementation for rippled small pieces. Uh, hooks are small pieces of code installed on an account that impose rules for the transactions. The account sends or receives before the transactions can be finalized. 
Uh, it also has going to feature a native token and better tokenomics. You're like, well, what does that mean? Well, Zahao is secured by its native token, Zahao XRP. What do you think about that? Currency code is XRP plus. So when you hear XRP plus, they're talking about the Zahao XRP powered by better tokenomics designed to reward validators. So you think about rewarding validators, it's always been a big thing. So with Bitcoin, you've got miners. What are the miners actually doing? They're validating the transaction. And for doing the valid tra validating the transaction, they get a small little something, right? And that's why they're mining it because there's no other reason. If there was no tokenomics and there was no reward, nobody would be mining Bitcoin. And when the price drops super low, it becomes very difficult to mine Bitcoin because tokenomics don't work. That makes sense. Costs you more than you're actually going to be receiving. So they're going to create the rewards validators and support smart contracts. It's got this like burn it. burn to mint liquidity um, as a XRPL side chain. The how will be linked to the XRPL via one way burn to mint liquidity portal allows users to clone their XRPL account address on the how and then mm. burn XRP on mainnet in return for a matching number of XR or is how XRP or XRP plus. And then what the Genesis hooks. So, so are they planning on equating the value of xrp plus are they pegging it to the xrp in that case because if you can move your xrp plus or your xrp you burn your xrp in exchange for an xrp plus is what they're saying it's a little bit different than that because i heard uh weeks of was like he was he was actually i heard him in a spaces and he was talking about that this one sounds like yeah you burn all your xrp there's no really reason to do that it has that built in but again, you, you're cloning your XRP, your XRP uh, account. So there, there, mm. there's some, there, there'll be some more specifics on that. But the, the Genesis hooks governance games, the house Genesis account powered by a hook that regulates, amongst other things, the emission of news of how XRP and the hooks governed by two tiered governance game with up to 20 independently owned validators as participants. So um, let's see, there was one other thing I want to see here. Um, yeah, it's. And then but there's, there's a lot a to this. Think about there's a where lot they're more going. to this. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's to a it. ton to it. I mean, think about what their objective is and what they're talking about with the side chain, with the hooks, with the with the smart contract, and compare where you know we anticipated Flare would be already at this point. And to me, you know, I mean, it slightly different. Uh, looking, you know, it seems like they're looking for a similar kind of outcome to start creating, you know, positive uh, utility of the XRPL smart contracts. Um, you know, we're, we're just seeing kind of the infancy of it. Obviously, you're going to need an asset, like you said, you know, to reward uh, and, and potentially, you know, create value for the completion, you know, of a smart contract. Um, but it, it's going to be interesting to see that where they're going with this. Um, they're also talking about uh, what was the 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 uh, replacement for the XL S twenty, and uh, yeah, what, what they're the, upgraded. Yeah, so it says the unlike Yuri the XLS token. because right now we're over on XRP Cafe and they are XLS twenty uh, NFT right. protocol, but they say it's this um, that standard was recently introduced that that's where the badass Yetis um, sit. It says which relies on compressing NFTs to on ledger pages. So how we use URI token objects. It's going to be an upgraded, um, better system. And the URI tokens are short for Uniform Resource Identifier Token. Innovative way to represent and manage FT NFTs, the metadata, the ownership information within Zahao. So each token is a first-class ledger object with a unique address that does not change when the current owner does. So it, it's actually a better system. Because remember, they were able to create this from ground zero where the XLS 20 was trying to fit it into an existing eco ecosystem Very with the compressed NFT. So, I mean, the cool thing is, and this is going to be interesting to see how the exchanges, how this is going to go, right? You have the protocol, but you still have to have people using it, right? You still have to have uh, an exchange to be able to buy that. But I would expect that we'll have to wait and see what XRP, you know, Cafe or on XRP and, and a lot of the other ones, what they're going to do. But yeah, here's the it. difference. It's lightweight. It's efficient. First on class on ledger objects can be created, destroyed, transferred, bought, sold, interoperate with hooks, 
Trading is limited to a single cell offer per token can be accepted by. So I like this part is interesting too. interoperate easily with hooks. So imagine how you can expand NFTs into like a smart contract. It'd be pretty interesting to see how that, how that's going to yeah. develop. Right. And that's kind of the direction things have to go. We have to see an NFT tied up with a smart contract. I mean, that, that becomes the finality of it. Uh, and that's, you know, that becomes your, in theory, the, the NFT is the certificate completion you know, of the smart contract that whatever that might represent, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, real estate holding or a contract or something else, if it is able to embed that NFT into the contract, I, I don't know what, however, it's going to be to represent and put it on the blockchain, uh, for all time, but then still to be able to transfer, you can then transfer this owned item. Here it is represented with that NFT and you can start it's it's going to be interesting the direction this can go in. I I'm like excited. this next line, Chip. Interoperability. We're all about interoperability. I believe that that's the only way to go. These silos don't work, and we need interoperability, especially when it comes to smart contracts. Yeah, just want to let you know. Well, that's Karma good. Karma Car 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 Carmichael's here. I just want to let you know that. Karma Carmichael. Karma Carmichael. Welcome. Here. Well, also immutability. So the tokens come with the built-in. So Jeff and I are a little more familiar with this. We've been through the pain of like becoming newbie and then figuring all this stuff out. So what's interesting about this is you have that extensible metadata JSON. This is the file that Jeff and I created for every badass Yeti. And this file contains every one of the attributes that's original to that. It also creates, it also has the link to where that's on the blockchain, where the storage is, IFPS. And uh, it's also backed up to another one. The cool thing about using xrp.cafe is they've got they've got some backup there because there's two places you actually upload but what they're saying this provides flexibilities for developers and creators to choose their own preferred storage solutions um, such as ipfs which is what we talked about or traditional web servers so it doesn't have to be limited um it can it, gets, it can open up a little bit more also promotes the interoperability with existing nft standards and platforms facilitating the integration with the broader NFT ecosystem, meaning That's important I'm too. reading that, Jeff, I'm reading that, you know, we're not going to be totally, you look at when we, th when, you know, Jeff and I, we look at like, okay, we, we, we have, we're releasing more NFTs, we're, we're building NFTs, we have another NFT project, we're working on the White Tribe, and we think about this, like, it's pretty alluring to think about like, hey, do you want to go to OpenSea? Sure, you can be buried with a billion other projects out there, or you can go, how about Ordinals, which is the Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's, um, their version of uh, NFTs. But I'm looking, Jeff and I are looking at like the garbage doodles you used to create when you're like bored in school and then somebody took that and developed it and then they're getting like half a Bitcoin for it. It's ridiculous. But anyway, we're like, it, okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it is insane, you know, but looking at this broader NFT ecosystem, it's really the broader ecosystem. So, you know, think about it from a perspective of, what we've just gone through seeing the SEC going after Ripple and XRP. XRP gets some victory over over the SEC. Then they move on to grayscale. They, you know, and, and there's a victory over there, a big victory on the ETF uh, front. Uh, and then Coinbase and then Gemini and each one of those different from the other, each one in, in its individual silo, but each outcome benefiting the grander ecosystem. That's how I look at the interoperability. They all the inner everything benefits uh, and will live or die based on the outcome of the other. You can't just have one. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.